Hey guys, welcome to Let's Play Heretic. This is a game from my childhood, actually. I'm gonna play as play on the middle uh, difficulty, just because otherwise, like, the difficulty basically just reduces ammo and increases enemy health. So it slows down the gameplay a lot, so I want to kind of get into things a little bit faster than that, if at all possible. So anyway, Heretic is an incredibly old game, as you might be able to tell from looking at it. It was published in 1994 by Raven Software, so I was about five years old when it came out. That was probably about when I started playing it. Um, like When I was between like five and eight years old, I played this game a lot. It was obviously my first first-person shooter, and indeed one of the very first first-person shooters uh, ever made, as far as we know it. Uh, those of you who have a background in classic gaming probably can recognize that this is made on the Doom engine but there were significant tweaks made in, in it. Uh, Raven Software really got their hands dirty by uh, you know, changing the mechanics of Doom to kind of uh, facilitate the kind of gameplay they were looking for. It was, I believe, the very first first-person shooter ever to allow you to look up and down, and they also added the ability to fly in this game, which is obviously not something that the Doom engine would have supported because it had a much weaker grasp of three-dimensional space than uh, the Heretic engine. So it was it was a significant step up, and it made a lot of strides from Doom toward what we currently think of as a first-person shooter. So uh, yeah, this is a game I have a lot of nostalgia for, obviously, and I thought it would be really fun to do a Let's Play of it on my channel and uh, you know, kind of share my experiences with this game with the rest of you guys, because it really is, it's a gem of its time. I had a lot of fun with this as a kid, and I still, to this day, have a lot of fun with it, though I'm not sure how much of that is nostalgia. I don't know. But uh, you, you have to admit that for the time, 1994, a very impressive game. Graphically, it's quite beautiful. They put a lot of work into the models and really pushed the current technology to its limits to uh, create this game. Whoops. So they let a guy behind me there. So, uh, yeah, this game does have a story, but I didn't actually know it had a story until I was like 15, so like 10 years after I first played it, and it didn't really change my understanding of the game at all, so it's, it's one of those stories. It's really, you don't need to know it for the game, but the basic premise is there were these serpent riders who came into this world and fucked shit up, basically. They took over the kings, they like casted enchantments on the kings and made the kings work for them and basically took control of the uh, the armies of the kingdoms and were coming after this group of elves who were immune to their mind control magic. And, uh, oops, this way. Sorry, I'm just kind of blasting through the first level here because, uh, you know, I kind of already know what I'm doing. But anyway, the, the elves were they in possession of candles that could stop the king's power but also weaken themselves and they put out the candles to kind of get rid of the king's armies but as a result the serpent riders came after the uh, elves themselves and killed them all and we're the last one standing and we're trying to drive the forces of the serpent riders out of our kingdom and that's it it's kind of a, a silly fantasy storyline but anyway uh, as you can see there's strong parallels here to doom I've gotten so far the uh, wand crystal, you start out with that, is like your pistol, basically. It's fairly inaccurate, does a small amount of damage, and ammo for it is absolutely everywhere. And then we've got our uh, crossbow, which Doom fanatics will have noticed has very similar mechanics to the shotguns in that it splits up into distinct projectiles, and the more precisely you aim, the more of them are going to hit. It's made of three pieces, so if you can hit an enemy with all three, then you're in a good position. So that's the first level done, very much just a little tutorial level. Um, and after that the game kinda gets real. So here we are on the dungeons. So yeah, we also picked up the gauntlets of the necromancer, which are uh, functionally equivalent to a chainsaw. So those will allow us to, if we get into a situation where we're forced into close contact with enemies or we're just low on ammo, those can be essential. It's usually more of a problem in the higher difficulties I was talking about. Your ammo is going to be so incredibly limited that a lot of it is like hit and run with melee weapons trying to save up enough ammo to take stuff out. And I, like, I've beaten it on the highest difficulties and I enjoyed myself, but I don't think it would make for the best let's play. 
because there, like I said, it's it slows down the action a lot. I want to I want to kind of have a decent pace going through this game. So, oh, I forgot it's in this one. Nope. There's a yeah, there it is. That fucker always scared the shit out of me when I was a little kid. So uh, here we are, and if we pay careful attention, we can see where the fuck are those axes coming from. I used to not even notice there were axes when I was a kid, and just be like, what the hell? You just get hit when you're in that room. Just get quick. Get through as quick as you can. I found out much, much later that what's actually going on is you've got this one-way wall through here so they can shoot through at you, but you can't see them. And you have to sneak back there and take them over. <clears throat> so let's grab this crossbow for a little bit more ethereal arrows. And this is kind of a funny, like, nested trap. And this is a very common theme in Heretic. You'll pick up something cool, and then a wall will open up, and there's just enemies everywhere, and you have to take them out. Took out those guys. What's over here? Oh, more ammo. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Another pile of zombies. And then we take these guys out. That's the last one, isn't it? Yeah. So that's all the nested traps. That happened, like, three times in a row. So let's just keep on moving here. We can see... We have a key back here, and we saw earlier there's a door with yellow orbs next to it. That's going to be a door that requires the yellow key, so we'll pick that up now. Let's head back here, grab the shield. That's another trap, but we already took care of that on the other side. So all those monsters are already dead. Let's head through here. Hit the switch. We realized we hit a dead end back there, but if we hit the switch, then we can open up the wall over here and continue moving forward. There's a shit ton of zombies over here. I should mention uh, another thing that Heretic added to the FPS genre that had never been there before is this inventory system we have going on. And here, right here, that purple thing I just picked up is called a quartz flask. And I can use that whenever I want, at navigating my inventory with the uh, brackets. I can see what I've got. So the quartz flask gives me 25 health on demand. The Tome of Power, I'll probably show that off pretty soon, will make our bullets a little bit more powerful for a little while, or quite a bit more powerful actually, and the Torch uh, gives us light in dark situations, which will also be useful fairly shortly here. So we've got a Quartz Flask and a weapon in there, but this thing just rose up, so we got to be careful, because it's going to land on us, but we can just hide in the corner here. And we got our uh, four slot weapon, which is the Dragon Claw which allows us to shoot these claw orbs and it's the functional equivalent of the uh, chain gun from Doom so we'll show that off next time we see an enemy here we go so it's fairly powerful but I think it's actually a little bit poorly balanced in that I usually prefer using the ethereal crossbow unless there's a whole bunch of enemies that I need to tear apart because the accuracy on this thing is not as great as the crossbows in my opinion So. If there's a huge swarm of enemies, I'll usually use, bust out my Dragon Claw. If there's just, like, some single target enemies like this, I'll use my Ethereal Crossbow to take them out a little bit more efficiently. These purple thing, or not purple, green things, are, uh, like, bombs, basically. They're the exploding barrel of Heretic, but they're a little bit different in that they hover and they, like, move around as you push on them or shoot them and they can cause chain reactions that can kill enemies or you. I've killed myself many times by shooting one of those things and ending up like blowing up four or five of them in my face and dying instantly. So you have to be a little bit careful with those. Let's watch out for these knights here. There we go. So back here we got a map scroll. I should mention that there is a map system. I haven't been usually using it much because I know exactly where I'm going, but as you can see... oh. <laughs> that was probably poorly thought out. I didn't realize these guys had come out already. I thought that was after you opened up this secret. Apparently I was wrong. Found a ring of invincibility in there, which we can hang on to until we're in a horrible situation. That gives us like 10 or 20 seconds of being completely immune to damage. Let's run across this acid pit here. It doesn't do too much damage as long as you don't dawdle. Pick up some more ammo and we're on our way. So anyway, the map shows you... Uh, everywhere you've been and if you get the map scroll it shows you everything on the map entirely so it's a big help in finding all of the secrets though often they're really like esoteric ways to open a path so you'll, this is another thing that will kill us if we dawdle 
Um, so you'll have to like hit a switch off on the other side of the level and then that will trigger another path opening to get to a secret. So just having the map in no way guarantees that you'll be able to figure out what's going on. Get out of there! <laughs> I actually got stuck there behind the door. Right, now we should be in a good position. Shoot our way through these guys. Oh, didn't expect him to be there. And there we go. So I should mention that I'm playing this on the Doomsday engine which is an open source project that is duplicating the engine of Doom and uh, the other games that use the Doom or Doom based engines such as Heretic. So I just got got my hands on a Heretic WAD file, which uh, those of you who used to do Doom modding way back in the day will know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those who don't, WADs are like maps files that go into the Doom engine and uh, mods were all made through those obviously and Heretic was as well. It was essentially a very advanced Doom mod that also contains some engine tweaks but the Doomsday engine has been built to support all of the tweaks that Heretic made to the engine uh, such as like this advanced three-dimensional space that it's got going for it and also it had like more advanced lighting I think than Heretic and some other stuff along those lines. Um, yeah, it was, it was like I said earlier quite a technological feat. So I picked up earlier, if you've noticed, the Wings of Wrath. So let's show off what that does right now. I'm going to use them with Enter, and now we can fly. So I'm going to pop up here and grab all of this cool stuff. Go over here. If you were very attentive, you might have noticed there was some stuff on top of this thing earlier on. So we'll grab all that as well. Oh, I almost forgot about down here. Oop. <laughs> I'm pushing the wrong button fly button instead of the open button. My fly button is E. Uh, I'm used to E being used, but in fact spacebar is used in this game because there's still no jump. There is a hack that like puts jump into the game, but I don't use it because it ruins a lot of puzzles. The game is designed around not being able to jump. Uh, so if you use a jump button then it kind of ruins everything for you. Let's go ahead and bust out our torch here because I happen to know that later on in this room, right now in fact, um, the lights go out, so we're going to use our torch so we can still see. Because otherwise this would be pitch black, we wouldn't be able to see the enemies, it would be a huge problem for us. Not huge, because I know where everything is, but you know, it makes it easier to tell what's going on. So that's the function of the torch, and as you can tell, even out here the screen's a little bit brighter. So we did pick up a blue key in there, and if you were especially attentive, you might have noticed that there was a blue door over here, so of course, that's where our blue key goes. And we'll head down this way to the exit. And that's that for this level. I kind of expected that to take more like 20 minutes, so let's do one more level because we're only at 13 minutes in the video. I was... My, my suspicion was that I would be ending the video there, but not the case. Let's do one more, because why not? That would be an incredibly short video if I ended it right there. So we're on to the gatehouse. And uh, I should note that I am blasting through these first few levels, and that's because it's all on muscle memory. I used to play through these levels like over and over and over again when I was a kid, but I was an idiot and couldn't get through this one level. So after that, my understanding of the game gets way weaker, so we'll start slowing down a little bit and having to figure out what's going on. So, oh, we just picked up the fire mace, which shoots these exploding balls, but we'll save that ammo, because it's, I think, the most powerful weapon in this set of levels. Right now we're on City of the Damned, which is the first map pack. That kind of looks like a secret door, but it's not. Uh, yeah, City of the Damned is the first set of levels in Heretic, and it was set out as freeware, which is a term that maybe some of you will recognize from way in the past, in the early 90s. Um, freeware is free software that you can share however you want without getting into legal trouble. And it was like essentially the demo version of the game. It was quite a long demo, really. And then the expansion features... Uh, man, how do I get those to come down? There we go. These are triggered by s stepping on a certain area of the floor. Let's go ahead and start conserving ammo a little bit, or I should use this thing, actually. Um, because we're starting to run out of ethereal bolts. But anyway, Hell's Maw and the Dome of Despair were uh, an expansion, and then there are further expansions that updated even further. But they weren't in the wad I got my hands on, so I might have to look for those. If this 
the series is popular enough that I feel like I need to go beyond Dome of Despair, but getting through all the way through to the end of Dome of Despair will probably span um, several episodes, of this, several being like, you know, at least 10 or 15. So we'll see if the series has that kind of longevity. But yeah, so there's quite a bit of content in this game. I don't remember what it came out for. I wasn't actually the one who bought it. What the the context in which I played this game as a kid was my stepdad was an architect and at his office, you know, often he wouldn't have any projects going on so I could go and hang out at the office and uh, he and his co-workers would be sitting around drinking beer and I could play games on the computer and this is one of the major games I played. In fact, I remember when I was very young, like more toward the five years old and the eight years old, I would like sit on my stepdad's lap and he would be in charge of moving the character and I would be in charge of the fire button and opening doors. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, gotta say. Though, um, you know, I'm not sure if I, at this point, would like approve of the exposure to violence, but, you know, I was totally desensitized to it. I never had nightmares or anything about Heretic. I, I always kind of liked it and I think this got me to the point where, like, a game like Binding of Isaac doesn't even strike me as weird anymore. Because I've, I've never been much for, like, censorship in games or anything like that. I kind of... It's whatever. I'm not really concerned. I actually went the wrong way first, so I'll have to double back in a second because there's some secrets the other way that we won't have a chance to get back to. So let's take out these guys. Switch back to our ethereal crossbow. Hit the switch while we're here. Up this way to grab another bag of holding. Oh, I should have mentioned, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not when I first got it. In the first level we picked up a bag of holding, which is like a backpack of ammo in Doom, in that it doubles the amount of ammo you can hold in, uh, you know, at one time. So your default, like, maximum ammo for the ethereal crossbow is going to be 50, but after you pick up the bag of holding you can hold up to 100 and so forth. So very, very, very useful item to get, otherwise you'll end up not being able to pick up a lot of ammo. And ammo really is a bust boon kind of thing in this game. There will be times, like you'll notice on this level, I've been consistently low on ethereal arrows because it seems like they're just not that common on this level, but in other levels you'll be like, you're, you're never going to be wanting for ammo of that tier. It's just not going to happen. So I think we've cleared out everything in this area, so let's head up the, this little circular staircase. We got a couple more knights, and you can see behind this guy, there's our green key, as well as this red thing with the sparks coming out of it is a teleporter. So let's head back over here, and over this way, and if you recall, that didn't used to be down, it used to be inaccessible, but the lever we hit over by the green key allowed us to open that up and the lever that we just hit there opened up this little passageway here to get into a, kind of a pseudo secret area. You'd have to be pretty stupid not to notice this one, but you know, the, the secrets get tougher and tougher as you move on in the game to the point where there are levels where I've never to this day found all of the secrets because they're so bizarre and esoteric. In fact, there are levels that have taken me like two hours just because I can't find the one thing that you need to do to progress. Sometimes the level design is a little bit iffy in this game. And for that reason, I'm going to try to make sure I actually know what I'm doing before I record an episode, just so that I don't, like, wander around lost, because it, it's totally feasible in this game to end up lost for, like I said, two hours plus, just being like, where the fuck do I go? Uh, but that's not going to be the case anytime soon, anyway. I pretty much have a handle on all of the stuff that we're likely to see for the next several episodes. We just hit a couple switches there. This is about perfect. Wow, I got through the gatehouse a lot more quickly than I had thought I would. I know I did, for a fact I didn't get all the secrets, but that's okay. Because um, I'm not really trying to 100% this. I'm just showing off the game, going through. So yeah, that is Heretic. I know I don't usually do this, but it's really important, I've found, to get new series on YouTube off to a good start or they're just going to struggle the entire time. So if you liked this series, 
do remember that uh, there is a like button that acts as sort of an outlet for any kind of positive emotions you might have for this video. If you don't like the video, definitely let me know in the comments uh, every single time you don't like anything I do because I really take uh, constructive feedback seriously. So if you don't like the series, tell me. This fucking sucks. And uh, if I get enough feedback like that, I probably won't. Uh, continue with this and instead I'll try to do something that you guys will enjoy more. But regardless of whether you enjoy this or not, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.